Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to create depth of field using Arnold render. Now let's talk about what depth of field is. Depth of field is the distance between the closest and the farthest objects in a photo that appears acceptably sharp your camera can only focus sharply at one point. And as a result of that, we get two types of photos, shallow depth of field and deep depth of field. Now, this is a photo I took with a normal point and shoot camera long time ago when I had a trip to Norway. And you can see the near ground is very sharp, easy to see, and the background is quite blurry. That is a shallow depth of field effect. In the same trip, I took this photo, where it's a landscape photo, there is no blurry area in the photo. I try to make everything as sharp as possible. The camera is not good, so because of that, it's not really the best photo, but everything is relatively clear. Now let's explore why we're getting shallow or deep depth of field. It actually comes down to the size of the aperture of your camera. The larger the aperture, the more light comes in and creates shallower depth of field, meaning that one subject is sharp and the rest is going to be blurry, occasionally the background. Now the opposite applies as well. If you have a smaller aperture, then the opening of your lens is going to be tiny. And because of that, the amount of light reaching the camera sensor is going to be less. And because of that, you're getting deeper depth of field or DOF. Now, in order to get depth of field going with Arnold, you need to think about three main things. I have the um, render view in the left hand side and the perspective on the right hand side. I'm going to click on this button and this button takes me to the camera attribute. You usually don't want to touch any of these settings here. And although you have a depth of field, I would rather keep that untouched and go all the way down to Arnold. That's where I make my changes. You can enable depth of field here and look what I have access to. Aperture size. Remember I talked about larger aperture size, shallower depth of field. That's how you can achieve that. Now you need to think about what object you would like to have in focus. Let's say we want this cube to be in focus. We want this tiny cube, red cube to be center of focus. And we would like to create shallow depth of field where pretty much everything else is relatively blurry. No problem. I'm going to go to camera attribute, enable depth of field. Nothing is going to happen because we need to kind of find the distance from the camera to this object. How can we achieve that? You need to go to display and heads up display and object details. As soon as you enable that, you get distance from camera. 171.18 is the figure that you need to memorize or make note of it because you kind of need that. Next, with the depth of field enabled, we need to put that number that we had into focus distance. I'm going to go into focus distance, 171.18 eight and enter. And you can see that right now everything is in focus. There's nothing blurry because we need to specify the aperture size. I can gradually but surely increase that. For example, an extreme value based on my scene size would be something around five. Um, so I'm going to start with probably one because five is just too much and see what we're getting. Now, as you can see, the surrounding environment becomes just a tad blurry. And that's the magic of shallow depth of field. So if I zoom in, you can see 
the surrounding environment is a tad blurry. Now let's take that to the extreme a little and increase this aperture size to a very high value. I'm going to try six this time and you see that I'm getting a little bit of noise, well, great amount of noise. And in Arnold, the way to fix that is by increasing the AA sample in your Arnold. Unfortunately, there is not a whole lot of options that you can try. So I'm going to increase that to something like six just to get a slightly better result. And let's run another render, but this time we at the aperture size of six and see what we're getting. Now you can see that now we have this cube in focus and everything else is super blurry. You can use this technique on any other objects. For example, if we have this little guy over here, I can do exactly that with this object now. So 352.5. So I'm going to select my camera 352.5 and with the aperture size set to six, I'm going to run and see what we're getting. The object that we selected is now in focus and the near ground and almost the mid ground out of focus. So this is it. I hope you found this video useful and use this really artistic decision in your projects. See you in the next one.